I think we all have a box that looks just like this, um, you know, somewhere where you just put all your USB cables so that they'd be all at the same spot. However, when you finally need a USB cable, you go over and you plug it in and your device isn't working. Well, is it your device? You've never plugged it in before? Or is it your cable? Or is it your computer? Who knows? Uh, I found this little gadget, which was actually recently featured in a Great Scott video, although I did order it before that video. Um, and I'll show you how this thing works. For uh, a pretty reasonable price, you can go around and check all your cables for basic continuity. Let's take a look. So this is the Mechanic Brand DT3. If you see something that is Mechanic branded, uh, as far as like Chinesium stuff is concerned, Mechanic is probably the best version of that that you can buy. And it's reasonable. So this was uh, just over $5 Canadian, just over $3.50 American. And I mean, look at the packaging for a simple PCB like this. Uh, so pull this thing out and what do we see? Well, it is just a simple circuit board uh, with a, a two USB type C's up here. You've got a USB type A on here, USB micro type C and lightning on this side. And essentially how it works is you just get any regular five volt USB type C to plug into this one here, very specifically the power in pin. And then you can go ahead and test your cables and these LEDs will light based on the continuity through the cable. These are some quite reasonably priced but very robust Pizos brand cables. I'll put a link to them in the description because these are actually really decent cables. So I expect nothing wrong with this one. This is a USB micro. So you just plug the A on that side, micro on this side, and then your LEDs come on. So your D plus, D minus, VCC, and ground are connected on this. So that's good. It only checks for those four. I believe Micro has one more connection it can have, um, but I'm not I'm not sure about that. I'm not a big uh, fan of Micro. Here's another Pizos. Again, I love these cables. When I want a reliable cable, this is these are the cables I've been ordering, and uh, so far so good. So yeah, that's all good. See how quick it is? You just you can have this connected to your workbench at all times and just quickly. Uh, check your cables. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though is that the ports face opposite to each other. So when you have a short cable, this one's not too bad. Plug this one in, but you see it starts getting a little tight there. Plug this in. Ah, our first failure. So this one has the ground connected all the way through, but it has nothing else. So this cable is absolutely trash. I wouldn't even try to keep the ends on this. I'll probably just throw it away. But when you get really short cables like this one, this is going to be a little tight to plug in here. Oh, oh I need to do a half twist. There we go. Ah, there's another. Uh, oh, this one's not failed. So this one is very short. You see, you see how tight it is? But this one's not failed, it's just not a data cable. So this just has VCC and ground connected. So this is just a charge cable, which is odd because look how wide this cable is. It's one of those flat ribbon types, but they give you a really wide cable with only two conductors inside. Pretty interesting. And then this one here is a, a C to A. And so I will connect that, this one up. And again, quite short. Oh, but it barely makes it. There we go. So this one again, that's just a charge cable, C to A. So you can go around with a paint pen and mark this a charge cable. I mean, there is a need for charge cables, but when you need a data cable, it kind of sucks. It does also test C to C cables, and they, they have the extra conductor. They have the, uh, the CC pin. And so you can plug this in like so, and plug this in like so. There we go. We've got all five turned on. This is a uh, Google uh, Pixel cable, so I expected it to be good. So that's good. And actually, I want to try if the A to C will work on the same side. So if I go A over here and C over here, if this works, no, they need to go across. So like this. 
So this one has, it's all good. It doesn't have the CC because it's an A to C. So that's interesting. And then this one is another one I paid quite a bit of money for. So this says itself, it's a, it's a 120 watt cable and uh, it's fairly long. I don't know about 120 watts. I don't remember the brand, but I was going to do a USB cable shootout since I've done one before. Oh, this one has D plus, no D minus and no CC. Probably no CC is normal. Oh, did you see that? Oh, there is something wrong with this cable. It's uh, is very sketchy. Let me flip it around. Is it in here? It's kind of a lot of play there. Yeah, something isn't right with this cable. And I did lose the D minus a minute ago. So yeah, this cable is absolutely trash. And lastly, it also does these uh, A to lightning cables, which I think are on their way out. I think uh, Apple is dropping the lightning standard about time, if you ask me. But yeah, this works. And lightning has been highly criticized because it is just USB 2. It's not USB 3 compliant, so it's actually quite slow. I think it's 480 megabits per second. So I've got a couple of these that are... These are the cheapest Chinese fakes I could buy. I used to buy them by the dozens at a time. And when they would wear out, which would be pretty quick, I would just put them in the bin because for the price of one Apple cable, you could quite literally buy 30 of these uh, aftermarket cables. And my Apple cable didn't actually last all that long either. And so that's it. This is the Mechanic DT3 uh, USB cable tester. A uh, couple things that I would like for it to be improved with would be to add the USB types that are missing here. So USB mini is missing, uh, USB B is missing, and the high speed, you know, USB uh, mini B is missing. Um, so th those things would be a nice addition, but for what this thing does for the price, it's pretty incredible value. Now, if you wanted something a little bit more complete, you can go check out another maker's uh, open source cable tester project because that'll do literally anything you want and it's only limited by your PCB creation skills. Thanks for watching.